Hello everybody and welcome to my 27th Visual Basic in Excel tutorial. Um, this tutorial is going to step away a bit from what the last tutorials have been about and is going to look at error handling. So, um, let's open up a workbook and um, error handling is, well, it's a way of predicting errors that might happen in your codes and then telling it to respond to them. So let's have a sub error handling test. And I haven't really decided what error I'm going to have yet. So I think I'm going to have one for um, the opening of a workbook. So let's create a new workbook and file save as desktop save so we've got this on our desktop now book 2 um, and then book 1 is where we want to be doing ok so book 2 let's file uh, save as and let's go to tools and general options and let's put a password to open on it so um, password password okay and um, save that again replace it right so uh, let's go to computer and let's go to desktop and then find book 2 and what we want properties we want this the location so let's copy that and let's put this equal to a file path file path equals that and we want this to be a string okay and let's put backslash book to dot XLS. Alright, so this is our path of the file book two. Um, so let's set, um, let's declare a workbook variable, say uh, dim wb as workbook and set workbook equal to uh, workbooks dot open and I believe I showed you how to do this in a tutorial before so and then just put the file name so file path close alright and then let's try and run this let's close down book 2 and let's try and run this here now so it's password protected that's not what I expected it to do to be honest so um, let's leave it open let's try running it again now and password and it's not quite doing what I expected it to do um, just take the password off say options security get rid of the password let's try it now okay um, right so here we go now it has thrown an error because it doesn't want to open the same workbook twice um, so debug and then this is doing this bit here so we want an error handler to capture that so how do you make an error handler so the first one we're going to have is um, and you use an on error statement on error go to next and you need to split it up slightly more uh, and um, uh, and you don't actually want to go to, you want to resume next. And I added this while I was on pause while I was testing it. So on error, resume next. And what this will do is if there's an error, it will just skip to the next line of code. So message box uh, skipped error. 
So we know this one goes wrong. Um, so let's stop it and play it again. So do you want to reopen? No. And skipped error. So if we delete this again, and I'll show you it exactly the same. So no. And we come up with the error. Um, but if we re add that in, then play no. And it skips the error and goes on to the next one. So that's quite a useful one, um, and some people will just um, add that into a lot of their codes um, in case anything goes wrong it just skips the next line. So rather than throwing an error for people it um, just carries on running and you normally get a slight glitch rather than the whole program crashing. I don't recommend doing that, I don't personally like doing that, I like to, f to know if there's errors in my program. Um, and uh, if they are there then I like to fix them or if they're not fixable you know they're going to happen sometimes then you can use on error go to and I want it to go to my error handler so error handler and that's it and then later on in our code we put this and this is just to for the code above to reference where to go to so this means that if there's an error um, it's gonna skip all the way to here and it's gonna do this bit of code so uh, message box skipped error and rest of code so if we run this now, do you want to reopen? No. Skipped error and rest of code. So rather than doing this bit of code, when this bit goes wrong, it skips all the way to here and performs this bit of code. Um, so um, what if we don't really want it to skip the rest of that code? Well, what we can do is add in another go to and let's put top. And then up here, we can have top. Now, you've got to be careful with this because at the moment, the code's going to keep on running. It's not. It doesn't do this as a separate thing. Only if it does that, it will always do it, even if it gets to it. So if I play this for you, um, and I don't suggest you do it yourselves, no, skips error and rest of codes, and it goes to skips error because it's going to the skips error and rest of code, it's going here, it's going to the top, it's going back up here, and it's going to message skipped error. And if we play that again, and then you'll notice that it's just going to keep coming back because it's cycling down there, going up, going up. So we've got an infinite loop, so you need to use control and pause break uh, to get rid of that. And the way I normally go get around this is to have. Uh, a thing just before here say um, dim error tests as boolean and then error tests equals false or true error test equals true and then this bit of code here in the error handler, we go if error test equals true, then and um, at the end of it we put end if. Then we need to show that this that when the code runs normally the error test is okay. So if we put error test equals false just before the error handler. This means if the code runs normally and it's about to hit the error handler then it's not going to run again. So if we play this skips error and rest of code. So an error is occurring when it tries to open the book because it's already open and then we click OK skips error because um, error test is still true so it's skipping the error and then it's going back up to the top and then it's going through this skip error 
and then you click OK and it's done. And similarly if we click yes and put our password in and then it just goes to skip to error and it doesn't do this error handler at the bottom. So this is a simple way to uh, skip your errors. Um, you don't have to use this referencing technique. Um, you can use a line number as well but I find it's a lot better to use the referencing because then if we add more codes in, in here then we don't have to change the line numbers accordingly. Um, so, and um, that is error handling. Um, if you don't understand, then I suggest you just practice around um, and maybe watch the tutorial again. So, thanks for listening, and if you want to subscribe to my future tutorials, then please pop onto my channel.